Hello and welcome to another episode of Community Vibes with Brown Eyes. I just want to say that I can't believe that it's a monthly show and we're already on season one, episode four. The year is really leaving us. 2021 is really leaving us at a fast pace. So here we are in November and we're going into the holidays with all of the hustle and bustle and everything that's going on. So I decided to entitle this show, Our Community, Thankful and Giving, Pre and Post Pandemic. So our communities have gone through a lot since pre-pandemic and now we're going into post-pandemic, hopefully. We still have remnants of uh, COVID going around, um, but it seems like the vaccines have helped out a lot. Some people don't agree. Some people do agree. We have a lot of mis and disinformation regarding it. So there's a lot of emotions and a lot of opinions about it. Some people think that it's political. Some people think that it's a scam. It's a, you know, it's not real. It's, but f- for sure, I know that people have lost their lives. And that's for a fact. Because I know many of uh, my loved ones and friends, unfortunately, are not here anymore. And um, it happened with COVID and during COVID. So pre-COVID during this time of year, pre-Thanksgiving during COVID, which is a time where we in this country were taught as we went to school that uh, the pilgrims, you know, made a peace with the Indians who were really the natives because they were not from India, but they called them Indians, but they're the natives. And they were blessing the food and they were uh, thankful for the harvest and the pilgrims sat down and made peace with the Indians and ate. So what we do is sit down with our families and we feast. We have a a feast and we eat many uh, great foods, delicious foods, and we have laughter, memories, fun, and most of all, togetherness. Something that we have not experienced like that since uh, pre-COVID. So this is the second year where a lot of families still are opting to not get together, to come together and um, be, you know, with a lot of people in their homes or in places where they feel like they're going to be exposed to any type of illness. And it's understandable. It's been a very scary time. But uh, pre-pandemic for Thanksgiving, I remember back in the days, there were so many things that happened, even, you know, right before the pandemic, you know, you go out, some people feed the homeless, you have a spirit of giving, Thanksgiving, I'm thankful, you know, feeding the homeless, donating, you know, clothes, shoes, money, you know, financial things to organizations, food drives, Um, it's a season of giving, coke drives. So I remember when I was younger, and I lived in Brooklyn and some of my friends can attest to this and some of you guys probably can relate to this but we used to do a house hopping event during Thanksgiving in particular we would go from house to house maybe like four or five houses in one day just eating visiting people and leaving with either some cake a whole pie you know or, or, or plates of food for people who couldn't make it with us and come back with all this food and dessert that left us throughout the week and uh, we used to house hop and have such a good time and that that was a time where people could really reach out and touch each other and we coming into that season and it's different now it's totally different it started getting different over the years anyway but now with uh the pandemic going on it's, t- it's totally different now And um, in 2019, a lot of people came into 2020 with New Year's resolutions, with uh, planning to get married. You know, I had gotten a new job. I was excited about it still and thankful for it. You know, I I had a new marriage that was coming on a year and never, ever, ever did anybody think that come March in 2020, we will all be in, in total isolation. And even when the isolation happened we didn't think it would last that long we didn't think it would last over a year a year and a half so 
that really hit a lot of people hard because going home like that costs a lot of people their jobs because the longer businesses and places were shut down some of them had to shut down for good some of them because they lost funding and, and finances had to let go their employees so people lost their jobs one of the resources that was good during the time is that unemployment was given extra money so that helped cover you know expenses that you know just a single unemployment check would have done on a normal or regular basis and then they also had the stimulus checks coming out that did a little help for some people and also making it so that landlords could not evict you for a certain amount of time until you were able to get up the money so there was you know some resources out there that were able to help some people but during the pandemic when it hit the urban community it hit the urban community hard you know there was because of the population and the poverty you know we don't get you know resources in poor communities on a normal basis so during the pandemic it, it was even worse you know like i feel like they didn't get the treatment they didn't get the supplies or the things that they needed right away you know to be able to protect themselves they didn't have money to be able to get it on their own and you know i just feel like the urban communities got hit really hard and it really made me worry and fear like never before when i heard that refrigerator trucks were showing up just putting bodies in 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 the in a refrigerated truck because they didn't have enough room in the hospitals or the morgues to be able to hold these people you know people dropping off bodies at funeral homes and leaving them in front of the building you know i mean it was so much stuff going on that was fearful causing pandemonium panic worry anxiety in the air i remember my daughter she works in the icu unit and she was such a brave hero during that time i call her my hero and every nurse every nurse and the doctors too but the nurses are the ones who clean up the patients that really stay on you know with the patient longer than even the doctor does and they had to brave their way through this pandemic and walk right into it so they could try to save lives and and even risk their own health you know and they got families at home so when my daughter used to report to work I used to be so worried. I think I lost so many nights of sleep that I will never be able to get back. And when you lose sleep, your body breaks down. So I was worried about getting sick because my immune system was low because I wasn't getting enough rest. I was worrying, I was stressed. Uh you know, I was praying. People say, "Why worry when you can pray?" And I was praying, but I was a human, so I worried. Every time she went in the hospital and every time she came out, you know i was checking on her to make sure she wasn't coughing it was a new experience virus to us so i didn't know what to expect there was a lot of uh dis and misinformation out there so you didn't know what to think lots of worry people had lack of food people started having mental breakdowns at home so you could imagine that if you never been home 24/7, we love our loved ones. We love our wives, we love our husbands, we love our children. But being home 24/7 in isolation with very limited places to go because the job is shut down, the school is shut down. I can just imagine. And I'm sure some of you that are listening can relate. Just imagine this. You are a mother with school-aged children. and you have to work from home your husband has to work from home but now your children has to be school from home and then you have the younger children who are not in school yet that don't understand that and you have to monitor these children and try not to let them disturb your work day the other children's school day and then your husband's work day whatever he's doing at his job on phone calls or whatever i had a lot of people who I called that was home working I heard children crying in the background and everything so it was very challenging for some people and some people that never had mental problems before or breakdowns before had them domestic violence increased in a lot of homes in a lot of families child abuse even 
they just had a story that broke my heart here in New Jersey of a young girl who was missing and the whole community eventually got together because the mother was crying out. I'm not going to say the names of the people because some of you already know the story, you know the names, you know, and I don't want to put a bad name on a person that 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 did something people say did something ugly. But this young girl was missing for a very long time and people put demands on the police department and the politicians to get out here and help find this girl. Because usually in poor neighborhoods and in urban cities, children are not looked for as quick as some of the more affluent communities. So they were putting pressure. The mother was out there and this young girl, she was missing and I didn't know her at all. But I was kept checking in on the story, was worried about her. People were now concerned about their children, thinking, well, what happened with her? You know, it, it could happen to my kid, you know, grabbing onto their children and, and paying more attention. You know, just sent a panic through the community. But when this young lady who was only 14 years old was finally found, they found her in New York City and she had went to a shelter. And when they started questioning her, they found out that she hadn't been registered or going to school for about a year or, or, or maybe more. Wasn't even registered in school. So, I mean, I would think a year back, that's right in the pandemic moment. And not only that, is that she said that she was afraid to go home because she was afraid she was going to be abused by her mom. Because her mom did so many abusive things to her. You know, beating her and and belittling her and 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 treating her, you know, so bad that she wound up uh, losing her mother's uh, credit card or debit card at the store. And her mom told her that if you know if you don't find it, don't come back home. And that to her meant if I got abused for small things, that was painful. I can imagine what is going to happen to me if I go home now. So she ran. She 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 ran away. Domestic violence. And I just think, what did that girl go through for the last year? Not to make excuses for the mother, but what snapped in the mother's mind during isolation of the pandemic and having to stay quarantined and, and worrying about food. And I mean, I know people will say that we are adults and we should know better about what we're going to do, but you never know what somebody has gone through or, or, or what episode in life is going to make you snap. It is not hard for you to lose your mind depending on what happens and the timing of it all. So it made me wonder, you know, how many more children like her had to be home like that during the pandemic with stressed out parents. Even parents who were not mentally stressed out to the verge of hurting anyone in their household was challenged during this time. With all the things they had to do from home and learn, some people had to learn how to work the laptop. I had friends to call me and say, hey, my son got a Zoom class. Can you show me how to get on Zoom? I don't know how to work it. They gave him a laptop and I had to go and, you know, tutor them. And I'm sure other people had to do the same thing. We had to learn a new thing immediately to stay on top of life. We started using social media, started having more meetings, virtual meetings virtual events everything is online now because during that pandemic people had to try to find a new way to continue what they needed to continue to progress in spite of the fact of being in quarantine and isolated and it was a very tough time not only that during 2020 we had so much political tension in the air we had racial tension in the air People losing their lives in the street, the emotions in the street that was going on to fight for equality and justice for everyone. All over the world, people came out. They were hurt. They were angry. Then you had people in politics who got angry, you know, about the COVID uh, uh, virus saying it was political. It wasn't real. It was fake. You know, yet still people are dropping left and right, passing away. I mean, there, there were so many emotions. I mean, for the people who lost loved ones, I don't know if you're listening right now. You know, I lost loved ones, friends during COVID, from COVID. And the saddest thing about that time 
is that you couldn't even have a, 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 a funeral for them in the way you wanted to. You couldn't have a memorial service for them or even most importantly, be there for them. You know, I give a lot of respect to the nurses in the hospital. Hats off to them. They deserve a bonus for going through that COVID situation right into the fire and being heroes, trying to save people and saving people's lives. I know there were so many nurses that have family members on video chat on their own personal phones so their family members could talk to them and see them before they took their last breath. This was a new way. You couldn't go up and stand by your loved one's side and hold their hand while they were suffering. But there were nurses who allowed that because they knew because they have families at home themselves and they knew how much it meant to them to be able to talk to their family if it was them. So they did not find it robbery in their hearts to pull out their cell phones and appease the family and say, here's your loved one, let them see them, let them talk to them. Because we was dealing with a time where you couldn't be there, where you couldn't get the closure that you wanted. Some people still to this day does not have closure. And we say a lot of things to them, like keep your head up, you know, just think of the good memories of them. You know, they're still with you in spirit. And those things are good and they sound good and they are encouraging, but at the same token, when you don't have closure, you still gonna have your moments because you never got a chance to have closure with that person like you wanted to. So people have to give you a human element. They have to allow you to go through that human element of suffering and not make you feel like you have to be strong through something that you feel broken from. I remember when I was a little girl, um, my mom, you know, told me that my dad was coming over and um, my dad, he called and I got dressed up and I went outside and I was waiting for him. I was waiting for him from the morning time to the afternoon. I told all my friends, my dad was coming over and he probably was going to be taking us out. So I couldn't play with them that day, but I would see them the next day. And I sat on the steps and I waited and I waited. I mean, I must've waited a long time because my mom kept coming out. So oh, he didn't come yet. Okay. Well, he's probably delayed or maybe something happened, you know, and he'll be here a little later. But then when it got later, later in the evening, she told me, she said, well, you might as well come on inside now. He's probably not coming. And I said, no, no, he's going to come. He don't ever say he's not going to come and he don't come. And she was like, well, he didn't call. So maybe something came up with his job or it could have been anything. He'll call you tomorrow probably and let you know, but you should come in the house. And I, I didn't want to come in the house. So I stayed outside until it got dark and I stayed in front of the house. Then my mom said, well, it's dark outside. So you need to come in. And I'm going to tell you, my father never showed up again in my life because he passed away that weekend. And even to this day, I was 10 years old during that time. It's still painful. Sometimes on his birthday, I still cry when I think of him, wishing that he could be here so that I could talk to him, so that he could have been here for me through some challenging times in my life where I needed him. Sometimes I just think about him you know, in, 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 in life, you know, in certain times I hear conversations, you see a movie, somebody lose their dad. Anything can trigger pain in you, something like that. And, and it could be forever. My mom is 79 years old and she lost her mom when she was in her 20s and she still feels pain. So I explain this and say this to you guys to say that it's okay to be human and grieve. It's okay if you still have a wound to cry about it, to talk about it, to get help in finding coping mechanisms to help you get through it. Whatever happened through the pandemic, whether it be the loss of job, money, a house, or anything that meant a lot to you that broke you down, you can still cry and get up and get the help you need. Now, if you stay depressed for a long period of time, you might want to think about getting some professional help. I know a lot of people are seeking professional help right now because the social workers are very busy. So to me, that's a good thing. I'm glad people see the need
to get help and they are, are not hesitating to reach out to get somebody to talk to. I had to get somebody to talk to in my team life because that happened with me and my dad. And it was okay. I wasn't crazy. I just needed a little help to sort out my thoughts, my feelings, and my emotions because I was a very angry young girl, angry young woman because I needed my father in my life and he wasn't there and there was nothing I can do about it, you know? And um, I just say that because this is what we're dealing with in post-pandemic, coming into post-pandemic. We're not totally out of the woods, but life is sort of resuming slowly but surely back to whatever we call normal because it would never be like it was before you know and we're coming into a time where holidays are coming up where people are saying they're thankful they they want to give back you know they want to do things for people that may not be you know in a good predicament or circumstance and that's a good thing you know that's a very good thing but also remember we need to support and encourage each other you don't know what your neighbor is going through. You don't know what your coworker is going through. You don't know what your friends are going through. Sometimes you have friends that suffer inside and they don't even say anything. So it's good to encourage each other. Encourage each other with words of encouragement, not downplay what they're feeling. You know, a lot of us try to be tough. We say, hold your head up. You know, I'm gonna hold my head up, but if I wanna cry, I'm gonna cry because it's normal. As long as it's not consuming my life to the point where I'm not moving on, it's normal to grieve. You have to give yourself that period in that moment. And you're going to have bouts and moments, maybe for the next two, three years. It's okay if the tear come out of your eye here and there. You, you, you cry, you get up, you walk, you cry, you get up and walk until you're able to be able to be strong enough to not cry. But still, you, you have those memories to keep you with that person or those people that have moved on. So for this holiday and this Thanksgiving, we're going to be dealing with a lot of that. A lot of people don't feel like celebrating the holidays because they feel like it's not the same and it will never be the same ever again because of what they've endured. You know, and we got to let them have that. I don't feel like the holidays will be the same because of all the people I know that were lost and just going through this whole thing with the mass and people being sick and who who knows what other virus or what it's going to matriculate into we don't know it's so much misinformation out there uh, we don't even un you you listen to one person you do your research one researcher say that one researcher says something else so everybody's doing what they feel they need to do to safeguard themselves in their way some of us agree and some of us don't agree but either way we have to live together in a community and be comfortable enough to respect each other and whatever we believe and think and feel and know that we could get through this together. We are going to get through it. I mean, they had pandemics years ago and they got through it and um, and progressed and moved on and, and so will we. But for right now, we have to learn a new way of coping. We have to uh, relate to each other and, and, and connect with each other in ways that are encouraging. And we have to adjust to a, a new period of life and, and we have to start with just connecting with each other. And that's what Community Vibes is all about. And that is what I'm vying to do for the new year, to come into the new year with a live show where I'm interviewing and talking to residents and people in the community who have stepped out of their homes and have created things for and with other people that has been very beneficial and successful for young people for elderly people, for residents, for even for businesses and politicians. Politicians need us too. We can put them in office, but nobody is gonna be a superhero to be able to save everybody's uh, concerns and issues in the community. That's where we come in. If you we don't put the information out there or go out there and fight for the things or speak up for the things that we need or learn about what's going on so we'll know what we need, then we stay stuck. So we don't want to do that this year. We want to make sure that people are informed. And I'm going to tell you with the new way of life, I say there's a lot of good things that came out of it with this online thing. Because now businesses and organizations have the opportunity to get people interested in them and involved that don't even live in the state. They have organizations and churches and events that were online that people from everywhere 
all over the world could partake in something that people never even thought of before but now that everybody's on the line online live you can reach out and touch so many people beyond your community and i think that's important because when people from other communities share with each other, it's like they say, each one teach one. Each one learn from each other, each one encourage each other. You see what each other are doing and you use whatever tools you can from each other to utilize that in your community to make things better for yourself and people around you as well. So I like the fact that so many organizations out of this pandemic and out of even the, the, the political wars we've been having, the racism and all of the things that we've been experiencing, so many new organizations are out here. So many people said, I'm, I'm getting out here, I'm gonna start my live show. I'm getting out here, I'm gonna start this organization. And they put their foot forward and people came forward to be involved and participate with them. And now they have these mechanisms that's gonna be out here really working in the community to benefit a lot of people. And that means a lot. And we're utilizing our online tool so that we can do that and create resources for ourselves and other people in our community. So, and that means business owners or community men members, leaders, advocates, you know, involved in promoting and inspiring others to continue, you know, in their greatness in spite of the new way that we have to live now. So, what I'm saying to you now is we should never get comfortable again. You know, the slogan, I'm going to change it to we got to make our communities great again. We should never get comfortable. Even if you never hear another case of COVID or anything that go on, which you are, you're going to hear all kind of stuff. We still fighting racism. We still fighting poverty. We're going to still fight homelessness. There's still issues in our community. Violence. We should never get comfortable and accept these things in our community. We take them one by one or one, one group of people take one, another group of people take another, and together we work on those things to make a better environment and a better community for ourselves and, and, and everybody that live in it. So we should never, ever, ever get comfortable again and just accept things, accept not having the resources we need, accept not having the things in our community so we can thrive. We need to get out there, get involved and get informed and get the wheel spinning so that we could try things from small and then grow them so they become bigger things that can help many people. And that's what Community Vibes will be doing for the next year. We're going to be interviewing people from different communities, talking about some of the things that they're doing because we need everybody out here. It's not enough of us. I know a lot of people want to be the superhero and come up with the plan that's going to save the whole entire community. Dun, da, 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 da. Superman, superwoman. Not going to happen. It's going to take more than one person. It's going to take more than one idea. It's going to take more than one politician. And it's going to take more than one movement. Because there's a whole lot of people and a whole lot of issues out here to deal with. But with all of us working together, we can come together in a bullseye from different areas and create one big form of resource for everyone with whatever their issue is to get the help that they need and that's what it's all about we have to go hand in hand with each of our ideas and support one another into doing some good things in our community so never get comfortable again it's good to be thankful and um you got to know how to accept when somebody want to give you something because a lot of people have a lot of pride. If somebody want to be giving to you, then allow them to be because that makes them feel good. And if you really need what they're giving, it makes you feel good. So we got to sometimes we got to learn how to not just to give, but we got to learn how to accept what others came to give to take advantage of the things that people came to give to help us to make us better. So that's another area that we need to talk about and work on in the community with people getting what they need and it starts with a mindset and i always say a fresh start you know is a mind that has an idea that's put to action it doesn't matter how fast the fruit from that action grows but what matters is put into action and get it working because if you don't put it to action it'll never start working and we got a lot of great ideas we got a lot of great people with skills with 
different type of experiences and you don't have to have a master's degree or doctor's degree or own a big business or have a lot of money. All you need is a good idea and a drive to get out there and share that and gather and organize people or get with someone that knows how to organize, that like your idea and create things to make them happen in the community. So post pandemic, what we're going into now and going into the new year, this new way of life that we continue to live with masks and sanitary things, hand sanitizers and all these different fears and other fights that we're working on. We're going to go into this year together. And I want to also connect with other people that are doing things in their organizations and in their communities so that we could spread the word and just spread light or shed light on what is going on in the communities that's beneficial to all. So I want to thank you once again. If you have not gone to the YouTube page, please go to our YouTube page, Community Vibes with Brown Eyes. Subscribe to it so that you can get all the alerts for our live show. It will come to you when, when we're going live. And also like it so we can build our likes up. And I appreciate your um, contribution, your support, or anything that you have done to make Community Vibes come into fusion. I believe in it and I, I appreciate the people that are surrounding and supporting the efforts. So once again, I'll be coming back next month for our final show into the new years. I'm looking forward to you to tune in for the new year and make sure you subscribe so that you won't miss it. So take care and thank you for tuning in to Community Vibes with Brown Eyes. Talk to you again soon. Bye now.